Uh, well, we're just actually going to constitute uh, the presbytery here now, so let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we do give you thanks that we can gather here this evening, albeit in strange circumstances. But we know that you'll be with us, Father. You'll be with us in power and authority in the person of the Holy Spirit. And as we come together, Father, as representatives of congregations and presbytery, and as we constitute ourselves now a presbytery of your church, a court of your church, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will inspire all that is done here this evening. Everything that is done will be done to bring honour, glory and praise to your holy name. And we pray that each one of us involved here in St Paul's, but also over the internet, will experience a real sense of God's presence as we worship him and praise him and carry out this work for him. So we pray that you'll be pleased to be with us now and hear our prayer for we ask it as we ask all our prayers. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now given the fact that uh, Alistair is actually involved here um, in St Paul's, we have to appoint a clerk pro tem and Kenneth Gray, the business convener, is now going to take the oath. I promise that I will carry out with faithfulness the duties of the Presbytery Clerk Pro Tem. Thank you, Kenneth. Of grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And good evening everyone again. And a very warm welcome to Johnson St Paul's Parish Church. Sadly, we have to do things a bit differently tonight um, in our service in view of the ongoing problems with coronavirus. Nevertheless, we still come together with thanksgiving as representatives of presbytery and congregations to worship and praise the Lord who has brought us to this happy day for the linkage of Johnson St Paul's and Howard Parish Church. Obviously tonight we're not going to have any singing, we're not allowed to have any singing, but we're going to replace the singing with uh, scripture readings. And the first one I'd like to read tonight is from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God our Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up your ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, the King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship God as we come before him in prayer. Let us pray. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, he has given us new birth into a living hope. Lord God Almighty, as we ponder what you have done among us, we are moved with awe and wonder. In your hands a lump of clay became a human person. A barren woman brought forth a child of promise. A boy's lunch became a feast for a multitude. An impulsive fisherman became the rock on which you built your church. The hands of Jesus of Nazareth, pierced with nails, became a sign of your saving power. Truly nothing is too difficult for you, Lord God Almighty. And now we gather together in response to your call. We place ourselves again into your hands, trusting that we too may become new creations of your love and instruments of your grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. 
God of grace and Jesus Christ, you call us to be your servant people. But too often we have gone our own way, hoping to avoid your claim on our lives. We have not always trusted your good news to be good for us, and have resisted the transforming power of your word. Have mercy on us, O God. In your love, forgive us and set us free to respond to your call to be your faithful people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the good news. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, a new life has begun. Lord God, hear our prayer, for we ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we read from uh, God's Word once again. A uh, couple of readings this time. First one from uh, John's Gospel account. John chapter 1, reading the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world, the, the world was made through him. But the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace. And then reading from Matthew's Gospel account, in <coughs> chapter 7, we find these words about the wise and the foolish builders. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fail, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. Amen. May God bless to us that reading of his holy word. Now let's stand, please, and recite the Apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting.
We we'll read now from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the string and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now the clerk pro tem will read the note. The congregation and parish of Howwood fell vacant in 2013 with the retirement of the Reverend David Stewart. The question of readjustment was raised and a linkage was created with Loch Winner. That linkage was severed and Howwood was put into guardianship of the presbytery. In 2019, the possibility of a linkage with Johnston St Paul's was raised by the Kirk Session of Howwood. The Kirk Session of St Paul's supported the proposal. A basis of linkage was drawn up and approved by both Kirk Sessions and the Presbytery Planning Task Group in Edinburgh. Thereafter, both congregations voted in favour, and finally, the Presbytery gave its approval. The Presbytery of Greenock and Paisley is now meeting and will proceed to bring this linkage into effect. Well, let's uh, come before God in prayer once again as we offer up our prayer of thanksgiving and praise. God of all faithfulness and love, we thank you for the worship and witness of these congregations of Johnson St. Paul's and Howard, and for all the saints from each congregation who have gone before us in the faith. Help us through the power of your Holy Spirit to follow their example in living and sharing the gospel in word and deed. We praise and thank you for those who help bring us to faith, for those who have sustained us in our pilgrimage. For all who by their faith and witness enabled us to catch a glimpse of the glory of heaven. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the faithful ministers and preachers of your word who have ministered to us and revealed the truth of Jesus' love for us. We thank you for all of them as they helped us clearly discern your will and purpose for us as individuals and for the body of Christ. Father, we thank you that for so many through the years, these are gathering places have been the house and gate of heaven, a place of blessing and sanctification by word and sacrament. We thank you for all who have been blessed by the prayers and praises in each congregation from generation to generation. For all that in who served you, found you there, Grew more like Jesus there, for them we give you thanks. For all whose heart was healed, whose sin was pardoned, whose grief was eased, for them we give you thanks. For all who renewed their strength, received, resolved their doubts, and received your truth, for them we give you thanks. For all who have found peace and joy, whose lives were lit by faith, cheered by hope, and made radiant by your love, for them we give you thanks. And Father, as we take this new step of faith, make us worthy of those whose commitment, sacrifice, love and prayers have enriched and nourished parishes and people and caused your gospel to be renewed in every generation. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God forever. And now in the words which Jesus taught his disciples, we join together as a family of faith, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Following the resolution of the Presbytery of Greenock and Paisley to link the parishes of Johnson, St. Paul's and Howwood, as from the 11th day of August 2020, under the minister of Johnson, St. Paul's, the Reverend Dr. Alistair Shaw, we meet as a presbytery to seek the blessing of Almighty God on these congregations and parishes to install the Reverend Dr. Alistair Shaw as minister of the Light Charges. Alistair, would you please stand? On the occasion of your induction to Johnson St. Paul's, you solemnly vowed that believing in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and accepting his word and holy scripture, and the fundamental doctrines of the faith contained in the confession of faith of this church, you would seek the unity and peace of the church, and that inspired by zeal for the glory of God, by the love of Christ, and by a desire for the salvation of all people, you would lead a godly and circumspect life and would cheerfully discharge the duties of your ministry. Do you now reaffirm your adherence to that vow? I do. Thank you, Alistair. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the authority of this presbytery of Greenock and Paisley, I now declare you, Dr. Alistair Shaw, to be the minister of Johnson St. Paul's, like with Howard Parish Churches. I now address the representatives of the two congregations. Do you, the people of these congregations of Johnson St. Paul's and Howard, by welcoming Dr. Shaw in this new sphere of service, promise him your encouragement and support? Okay. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Friends, let's celebrate this new beginning in the usual manner by applauding. <laughs> Friends, we're gathered here tonight to celebrate an exciting new chapter in the life of the congregations of Johnson St. Paul's and Howard as they enter into this linkage. We come in thankfulness and praise to our God as we remember and reflect on the two congregations, two congregations with a rich and faithful history. And we thank God for their witness and worship over many years. May God bless you all as you seek to serve him in this linkage. May it be to the glory of God the Father, who has called us by his grace. May it be to the glory of God the Son, who loved us and gave himself for us. May it be to the glory of God the Holy Spirit, who enlightens us and sanctifies us. We stand here in the unity of faith, in the communion of saints, remembering in gratitude the labours and sacrifice of those who have gone before us in the faith. Those who have run their race and finished their course, acknowledging that without us, their work is not made perfect. Tonight we dedicate ourselves and you to the worship of God and the service of his kingdom. Spare no efforts to make fast the bonds of peace and the unity which the Spirit gives to each one of us. Live in union with Christ Jesus as Lord. And may you be rooted in him, built up in him, grow strong in faith in him, causing your hearts to overflow with thankfulness. And a few verses from the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is, his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, 
Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. Amen. Well, let's, uh, let's come before God in prayer once again. Our gracious Heavenly Father, you loved us before we could love you. And you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to show us the greatness and depth of that love. Fill our lives with his spirit of service, that together we may be the instruments of his love. Enable us to give ourselves for his sake, and for the sake of others as Christ in his love gave himself for us. Bless us with the wisdom and power of your Holy Spirit, that we may bear our witness with courage and determination that we may commend the gospel of Christ to our generation. Grant us fresh faith, vision, new life and power, and an abounding joy in all our service in his name. We pray for the new of the church, for the peace of the world, for the well-being of our nation and communities, for the release of those beset with troubles, and the relief of those who are in need for the care and comfort of our families and friends, and for the health and happiness of all people. Father, tonight we also remember those who life, love Christ's church, but who are prevented from sharing in this service through illness, old age, work or family commitments. Keep us united with them and also with those in the past who built up our churches by their faith and their lives. Help us in our generation to hand on to the generations to come the heritage of faith untarnished and undiminished to the glory of your holy name. Bring us at the last to the joy and fulfilment of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns as is worshipped and glorified with you the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Our last reading this evening is taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, reading from verse 16. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to run again. Extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Amen. May God bless to us all of these readings of His holy. And as we conclude our service this evening, let us have something to say. Before you conclude, moderator, I should take instruction to send an intimation of tonight's service and the linkage of the two congregations to the Faith Nurture Forum of the Church of Scotland. And I should also be instructed to send extract minutes of the same to the Kirk sessions of both Howwood Irish Church and St Paul's Church in Johnston. I take it that Presbytery so resolved. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bow in prayer once again. And now let us go from here in the peace and love of God that passes all human understanding. May that peace and love keep guard over our hearts and thoughts in Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, rest upon us and all those we love, this night and forevermore.